Okay, today we're working on a uh, Mazda 5 and the rear brakes are disc brakes but they've got this integrated parking brake. So here's your uh, caliper, here's your parking brake cable which is connected to the spring so when you let go it snaps back. Um, here's your hydraulic connection. So you remember from the front we need hydraulics to push the piston out. But for parking brake when you pull the lever this moves the cable in and it pulls on a parking gear or pawl and that forces the piston out. So there's, there's a threaded portion connected to the cable and lever and spring that we need to wind back. We cannot just push this piston back with the clamp. It needs to be pushed and turned simultaneously or it won't go in. You can try for your darndest to push this in with a C-clamp, it will not go. It needs to be turned and pushed simultaneously. So I have a tool that will do that. It's a little kit. We've got our little push tool. So this is the right hand thread one. I've got my little plate. You'll see how that works. And I've got my little adapter. So in this caliper piston, we've got to find the right tool that engages the two, the two dots. Sometimes it'll be a V or dots. So that one engages it nicely. And the kit comes with, oh, at least a dozen little adapters. So this one is the correct one. It says M on it. And it goes into this tool this way. So it's magnetic. So this just clicks. It just clicks on here for this application and it holds it in place. This actually clips over the handle and you will see here, I'm going to wind it back so that we've got lots of room to install it. Now I will engage the teeth into the piston and then I'll use a small wrench to turn the top and I'll use my hand here. So my left hand will be turning on this guy, my right hand will be on this guy and if it all is planned, that piston will slowly start going in until it won't go in anymore. So let's see if this works. One thing you have to be careful though on these older cars, make sure when you start turning that this boot doesn't start wrapping around. Because if the boot is stuck on here due to corrosion, you'll tear the boot. We never ever want a torn boot here because if salt water, uh, salt or water or whatever gets in here, then that piston will become seized. We've already taken a look behind this boot, it's free, so this piston will spin and quite clean inside. Okay, if you can't push this back, then you need to get a new caliper. If it will go back nicely, smoothly, all the way to the end, we're good. If this boot was torn, I would get a new caliper. So if it's got a tear in it, it goes. If it won't go back, it goes, right? Because what will happen is it won't go back or the brakes will be applied and it won't come off. The brakes will be stuck. So there's a few things. It doesn't matter that it looks a little rough and crusty. It, it, it's how it behaves. The boot is healthy and hopefully this spins and goes back and we'll know in a second. So. All right, so I've got my piston, I got my tool, and there it is. It's engaged, and I'm gonna bring this up, because I need to push these back. We're making room for the new pads. The piston has to go all the way back to where it was born, because we've got some brand new pads and a brand new rotor to stick in here, and if we don't push it back, we'll never get this to go over everything. Okay, so we're going right back to the way this thing was built. Oh, there we go. Okay, so this one here, I'm going to be turning clockwise on this guy. Oh, it's going back nicely. So counterclockwise on the wrench for this adapter, clockwise, it's actually going in. Right, I think that might be in already. Just back it off to be sure. So what I'm checking pushing on this and watch the piston, oh, it's in. This piston is in and I can verify that by removing this and seeing how far it's gone in. And of course, if I can't assemble the car, then it didn't go in far enough. But that is in all the way. The rubber is now flush, this piston is back. One thing you need to make note of, especially for those that have a little pin on the back of the pad, those dots should line up with the middle of this window. The dots, sometimes this will be a V. Make sure a V lines up here because the pad could have a pin on the back and it just keeps this from spinning. So our pads don't, but some pads do. You'll see here, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna back it off a smidge. Oh, too much. Ooh, this is really sensitive. Right there. I have the dots lined up with the middle of the window, okay? And uh, when we come back, we'll show you how this is assembled. I don't know how to 
Okay, here we are, we're back. So uh, we've got everything cleaned up. I think that'll light my way. Okay, so we've cleaned up the hub and we put a little anti-seize on the lip. That first lip, of course, is where the rotor sits and the second one is where the tire sits. So we clean these up, we clean this up, we clean this up. We don't put any lubrication on the threads. We don't put any lubrication here. We do put a little bit here where these sit. So what we're gonna do, we're first gonna put on our rotor, which we've taken out of its package. Sometimes these will have a little bit of a uh, oil on here to keep them from rusting. So we take a little brake cleaning array, clean up the friction surface. We don't need to worry about this. We don't need to worry about this. There's no parking brake in here. Okay, so this fits on here, like so. And we need to put on a nut so it doesn't just fall off and hit our toe. So we're gonna just spin on. There we go. So we've already pushed this back, I'm happy with it. So what goes on first is our caliper bracket. So when you look up torque specs for this, you'll see it, it'll be uh, caliper to knuckle and then caliper to bracket. So the knuckle is always the bigger bolt here, and it'll be a, a larger torque. And then when we have the pins, well these have a pin that go in, uh, they have a torque as well. So they are less. So let me put this on first. We're gonna put this on, torque this to spec. So every time you move along, you don't wanna put the whole thing together because this might block tightening these bolts. So when you put these on, you put your two bolts in, you just go ahead and torque it. So I'm gonna slip one in here, and I'm gonna get it started. When we come back, we'll be torquing. Okay, so for these, I'm gonna use just a 3 8 ratchet, six point socket. I'm gonna run these in until they bottom out, and then I'm gonna come back and torque it. Okay, make sure we run them both in. Just switch over. To our torque wrench. We've already set. This one's 50. Hope I can get in here. Mm, no, I can't. This one I can. So here we go. Stop. Pause. Okay, so I've got the caliper bracket on, and that attaches to the knuckle. I'm just going to run these up with the 3 8s did not get carried away because I have a torque wrench ready. So there we go, those are snug, three eighths. It is 50 foot pounds, so this one accurately does read that. I'm gonna just slide this on the top. There it is. The bottom one is a little snug, so I'm gonna actually put on an extension right there. Because I don't, if I'm not on it square, I'm always worried I'm gonna round it off. Ah, perfect, okay. Okay, and when I come back, I'll be putting the caliper. So sometimes when we have pads, some will have a squealer or a spring. Just pay attention the way that it was you were taking it off. With the squealers, it's pretty well standard practice. If there's a squealer, it goes on the inside, which is this side. When I say inside, it's the back side. Okay, in this one, there's actually a spring to keep down some of the chatter as you're going over the bumps. So when we took this one apart, we noticed the spring was on the inside and the outside one doesn't have a spring. So it simply goes like this. This is our caliper bracket. Here is our inboard pad. We're just gonna slide that in. Like a race car, they just pop right in. It's a nice design, really nice design. Okay, we're gonna take our caliper down and we should just be able, be careful how these route here. We should be able to just come from the back Oh, look at that, hey? Lots of room, we push that really well back, so we'll be able to guide these in. But you'll never never have to force this in. You don't hammer it, you don't pry it, it goes over. And if it doesn't go over with lots of room, you come and get me and we'll figure out what's wrong. Probably um, the piston wasn't pushed back far enough, or maybe we've got the wrong parts and that happens as well. But I'm really looking like this is gonna be awesome. So I'm gonna grab my two pins, which we've already lubricated with synthetic caliper grease. No anti-seize or motor oil on these. We use synthetic caliper grease because it doesn't react to the rubber. Anything else will either dry up, anti-seize will dry up and it won't be sliding, or oil will cause these to swell. And again, they won't slide. So we use synthetic caliper grease. This stuff's uh, the clean flow, it's called brake lubricant and it's, uh, it's clear. It looks like Vaseline. 
but it's not, right? And the little dab will do you. And you'll see here, when I push these in, they go in very easy. Now we wanna make sure, when we go to start these, that this is square, and we're gonna use a very small uh, ratchet, because we wanna make sure, I'm actually gonna switch the quarter inch drive. We wanna make sure we do not cross thread this. Okay, and that's the, probably the most important part here is to use torque specs, make sure this is plumb, start it by hand, and if you can't get it started, come and get me. They should go in, see how I'm using a quarter inch drive? See where my fingers are? It just started. So we just run this in. If it was cross threaded, I'd have to use a lot more force. So that is just going in beautifully. So we're not cross threading, there we go. These are only cinched down to 20 foot pounds anyway. Now to get the top one started, remember there's a spring in this pad. We have to push down and then start this. Okay, if you don't push down, you will cross thread it. Again, this went in really nice. I'm not using hardly any force. Got a little quarter inch drive ratchet and there it is. So it's in all the way. To finish this off, we've got our 3 8 torque wrench set to 20 foot pounds, right? That's all it needs. Put it in and very carefully, do not strip the threads out. Here it is, done. This handle pivots, so if I can't get a, oh there it goes, it just pivoted out of the way. Okay, I just got a little bit of a brake spring in the way, but I'm in. Okay, let's check our work. If we are successful, this still turns. Yes. And this still floats. We're done. Okay, we're back. We forgot a couple things. There is a clip on the outside that helps with the anti-chatter. There's always some sort of mechanism to put a little pressure on the pads so that every time you don't you go over a bump or a crack in the road, you'll hear this chick 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 hear this chattering noise. And that's what this is. This is the anti-chatter rattle, anti-rattle clips. And of course, uh, we were back here torquing the uh, caliper uh, pin bolts. And there's actually caps for this one to keep the dust and sand out. So we're gonna put this clip in, which can be a little tricky. We've already drilled out these holes, had a bit of corrosion, but these fall in just fine. So if you watch me, you can see we're gonna start this one. And it is in its hole. That goes there. And then we'll grab a blade screwdriver. We're gonna have to get a little bit. First we start it just a little bit. And then we force this behind. There it goes. Okay, now to finish that, it's not quite in. There it goes, it did go in a bit. You just take a little bulky hammer, just make sure that goes all the way in the hole, and there it is. That's on this side, that's on this side, so that's in. We can check. Okay, they're not falling out. Okay, they're working just fine. And we've got two little rubber caps. They just snap in the back where these have a little Allen key. And yeah, if you see these, put them in because the next person that works on it will thank you because it keeps all the crud out of it and they won't get rusty at all. Um, this has a little Allen key and that can be quite hard to clean out if you have to get in there again. So here we go, we've checked it. It turns, it floats, we've got our chatter, anti-chatter spring in and we've capped off our caliper pin bolts. Now this side is done, we're gonna go through the other side.